You're with Screed Africa magazine and we're reporting from the Durban Film Art taking place from the 17th to the 20th of July here in Derbs. I'm Deputy Editor Carly Barnes and I'm about to interview Hajuj Kuka. He's the director of Beats of the Antonov. Quite an amazing documentary about the Sudanese community that's uh, going through a bit of a civil war and just uh, how they're showing strength and resilience through their culture, through music and through dance. I really enjoyed your film. Thank you. I did watch it and I really enjoyed it. Um, Tell me, I'm kind of interested to know, how did you find the story? How did you hear about this community and, and what made you want to share that story? So I'm Sudanese and uh, in 2011 we had the country split, we had a new civil war starting and I knew some people who were friends of mine or were not who became refugees and I decided like go to meet them, do some documentation and I was thinking of the simple story that I've been hearing, the victims and whatnot. And when I went there I was discovered this whole new music and culture and arts and resilience and the victimhood existed. People were being bombed, they were dying, they were losing limbs, they were using losing kids and their homes. But there was another deeper story and there a story of resilience, of knowing what they want, of hope and of music and culture and art and so I ended up with Beast of the Antinov, this uplifting story that's closer to the depth and the complexity of humans and the complexity of Sudanese people and their struggle. You know, so often I think with documentary films, you kind of go into something that interests you for one reason and you find a whole plethora of other stories to, you know, talk about and share. So I think that's, that's really amazing. Um, so as I said, I watched the film and I got to tell you, there's some parts where I'm, I'm thinking to myself, how is this guy filming this right now? You know, there's a few hairy parts where you, you're a little bit worried, like, oh my gosh, this is actually real and it's actually happening. Can you tell me about some of maybe, were there any moments that you were scared, that you were a little bit nervous, that you felt uncomfortable? Well, the first time being bombed, like an airplane dropping a bomb, is this crazy experience of you hear the bomb people have been telling you about it so you're expecting it everybody there's the antinov it comes it bombs and suddenly it's real and you hear the bomb it drops you feel the vibration on the ground when the bomb goes you smell it and you're hiding in this little hole and at the same time being a filmmaker you want to film that so you're on between like trying to go up to see it and trying to hide because these sharpeners fly and everybody been telling you that's how people get injured so it's a scary experience uh, what helps in Sudan is like the communal thing. It's not happening just to you. Like when the first time it happened to me, there was the hole next to me. There was a pregnant woman who was hiding. And the hole is really deep. So it's like your whole body is inside it. So after that happened, we had to go and help her come out. And I was amazed. Like how did she jump into that hole? So when that happens, you start being like, it's worse than other people. And there's all these civilians next to you that you start thinking about communally about it. And that's, and that's where music comes and culture comes and getting together comes and that's how the communal way of getting, African communal way of actually getting over this struggle and surviving in the middle of a situation that you, humans should not be able to survive this and actually be happy. And that's, that's what happened and that's where the story comes from. So then let's talk a little bit about those really bright, amazing moments in the film. There is so much, you know, you find yourself smiling half the time and the other half the time going like holding your breath, you know. Uh, so let's talk about some great moments that you had while you were shooting. Those were a lot. It was amazing how I didn't have to go find music. I was basically most of the time just sitting down and I hear something happening, get my camera, run to it, and film it, and then be like, so why are you guys actually celebrating? And the answer was always amazing, and the answer was always different. And the music was, like, from little girls playing their own music to a whole group of men and women just deciding to walk throughout the whole camp and dance. So it was all these different combinations of amazing music, and, and because they made their own instruments from found objects there, because when they ran away from the Civil War, uh, they didn't take the instruments with them. So they had to create these instruments. And because the instruments are new, the sounds are new. So it's, I'm listening to Sudanese music that I never heard of before. It's new, the instruments are new, the lyrics are new. They're talking about what's happening to them, about fighting back, but also about an Antinov flying and all these new terminologies like Antinov and Klashenkov. And so they're actually putting them within their language and creating this, this new energy of music. So. It was very exciting, and the music is exciting, and I am actually have it recorded on my phone. I was listening to it through all the time, so there's this excitement of hope and change and, and all of that. It's, 
So that's what that's the energy that made the film. You co-produced this with South African producer Stephen Markowitz. Um, I want to know how that happened. How did that partnership take place? Stephen Markowitz has been amazing. Uh, he came into the project a year after working on the project. I got introduced to him by Russia Salty from Toronto International Film Festival. I was making the film. She saw it. She was interested. And then she was like, who are you working with? And I was like, no, I'm just doing it alone. And she's like, I recommend Stephen Markowitz. So I talked to Stephen. And Stephen loved the film, loved the energy into it. And he, he decided that, okay, I want to be a part of this project. And thankfully, because he knew how to do a lot of things I had no clue about, um, it was very helpful. He came in a good time because after the film got into Toronto, we had a very short period of time to actually finish the film. And I had to come, he got me to Cape Town and we did things that would normally have taken like six months in three weeks. And he, I went there and he had everything aligned. Like, okay, this is gonna be, you're gonna be edit. I found this amazing guy, Khaled uh, Shamsi, who actually is half South African, half Libyan, really understands the process, knows some Arabic. So he'd be the per perfect person for you to finish editing with. So I had this amazing guy to work with. And then I had like the color correct, the audio mix, everything ready. So it was just like, we just finished it. And then we were done. We had a tape in our hands and like, two days we flew with a tape to there. So all that was possible because of the expertise of Steven Markovitz and just having that positive energy. Like he's always laughing, he's always happy. I'm in Cape Town, it's beautiful. So all that helped make the film finish. It's all that table mountain air that they get up there, I'm telling you. <laughs> so now let's, let's close in, in speaking about what your plans are or your hopes are for the film. Um, I know it's featured at a number of festivals, but where, how do you want to see it grow and develop? So this film has been amazing. It went to Toronto International Film Festival, one of the best three film festivals in the world, got People's Choice Award, went to a lot of other festivals, got a couple other awards. It's been having a great life. It's going to be on a couple TV stations. So it's beyond any of my dreams or Steven's dreams. So we're super happy about it and we're just happy where it went. I mean, now it has, Piece of the Antinov has a life of its own and it's out there. So now I'm just working on my next project. I'm just, uh, after South Africa, I just want to stop touring with the film and go back to Nuba and work on my next project. Okay, I have one more question. Have they seen this film? Have the people of Nuba seen the film? And if so, what was their reaction? So yes, I'm proud to say while editing the film, I was actually living in Nuba. So I would actually have all these screenings where people will come see the film and I'll see from their reactions which part they were into, which part they were not, how they wanted to go. So they were actually part of my group that created the way the story was structured and whatnot. And even better now, because in the rebel-held areas, it's easy to show the film. People are excited about it. They want to see it. In Khartoum, now the film is, is being shown in an underground setting. And uh, we got this amazing lady who's actually showing it in neighborhoods, in different uh, workshops, in NGOs, in some embassies, in different areas, in Khartoum, in Darfur, in East Sudan. And these are amazing screenings and they have like discussions afterwards and send me pictures and what people have been saying. So the film is doing what it's meant to do is have a Sudanese discussion on identity, on why we have a war and why we're killing each other and how we can have a better identity that represents everybody and be more diverse. Well, thank you so much for chatting to us, Hajuj. Uh, this is Deputy Editor Carly Barnes for Screen Africa, and we're here at DIFF and DFM for the next couple of days, just reporting on the most amazing local films, international films, and the filmmakers that are tied to them.